Hello and welcome to Programming System Dynamics Model with Python. Now is the fifth video and today we will program a falling motion and apply them to a skydiving motion. Maybe you are already similar with this, as falling motion is one of the earliest dynamics that we learn in physics. When we throw an object, let's say a ball upwards, we give the ball some forces so the ball could move. When the balls move, we could absorb some physical properties such as the ball position, velocity, and acceleration. So, in this video, we will simulate them. The ball position S, the change in position V, and change in velocity A. All of them as function over time. For starter, Let's assume there is no air friction to simplify the model. As we have learned in physics, the change in position could be stated as derivative. That is the change of position in instantaneous change of time. So, in the change in velocity, the acceleration could be written as derivative in this equation. Because we assume no air friction, the acceleration of the ball will be constant due to gravity in negative direction because we set the upwards direction as positive and the gravity pulls the ball downwards. So for the diagram, it will be very simple. First, we have position S and the change in position is velocity and the change in velocity is the acceleration that in this case are constant. So, for the finite difference equation, it will be very simple. Let's say for position value in the next iteration is position in this iteration plus the velocity in this iteration, and for velocity in the next iteration is velocity in this iteration added by acceleration. Let's try to program this in Python. Now, let's say that a ball thrown straight up with initial velocity of 15 meter per second from the top of 11 meter tall building. Assuming no air friction and the gravitational constant is minus 9.81, we want to model the ball's position and velocity over time. First, we want to initialize the variables, and let's say we want to simulate this in 5 seconds. Let's create a velocity and position array, that is S and V, with their own respective initial value, and the gravitational constant is A minus 9.81. Let's run this code. And here is the finite difference program. The change in position is V and the change in velocity is A. And we update the S and V array in each iteration. Let's run this code. And let's create the plot for the position and for the velocity. Remember that this is not the x and y coordinate graph, but the position over time graph. And here is the ball velocity. Notice that when the ball is thrown straight up, it has positive velocity, and after 1 second, the ball moves downwards and it has negative velocity. The previous model is relatively easy as we don't count the air friction in the model. Now, let's add the air friction as forces affecting the ball movement. By the Newton's second law of motion, the acceleration is equal to forces divided by mass. If there is no friction, the forces are just waves that by the definition is mass times gravitational acceleration, so there is no other acceleration. 
we could add friction forces to the model by the Newtonian equation for friction through air that its force is equal to 0.65 times A times V squared where A is projected area of the object and V is velocity. Let's draw some motion diagram. The direction of friction forces is always the opposite of the movement. So, if the ball moves upwards, the friction pulls downwards, and when the ball moves downwards, the friction pushes the ball upwards. The weight is always in downwards direction, so it adds the negative in this equation. And for friction forces, we will write it like this. To keep the sign is the opposite of the velocity. Because the object is a ball, the projected area is a circle with area of P times R squared. So the total acceleration is weight plus friction divided by the mass. Because we add frictions to the model, the diagram also changes. The acceleration is calculated from mass and total forces, and the total forces is the sum of air friction and weight. And the weight is mass times gravitational accelerations, and the air friction is calculated from velocity and projected area. And the less is projected area are depends on the radius. Now, let's say we want to add air friction to previous solution, assuming the ball's radius is r and the ball's mass is m. For now, the ball thrown from 400 meters tall building with no initial velocity. As usual, we want to initialize the variables. Let's say we want to simulate this in 15 seconds. And here are the position array and the velocity array. Let's define the ball's properties like mass to, cal to calculate the weight and r to calculate the friction. Let's run this code. And here are the program. Note that we calculate the total force in each iteration because the air friction is different in each iteration. Let's run this code and let's create some plot for the position and velocity. Here are the plot for the ball position. See that after 15 or 40 seconds, it reached the zero point. And here are the velocity plot. Notice that the velocity is always negative as the ball is thrown downwards and after approximately 8 seconds, the velocity is constant. Now, let's apply the model to the more interesting activity such as skydiving. Skydiving activity could be modeled as falling motion and it heavily depends on air frictions. Let's assume that there is no horizontal movement and we ignore the change in air density. And then the last assumption is the parachutes open in certain position when falling. The model diagram is similar to the previous diagram. But the difference is the projected area calculation. The projected area depends on the conditions, whether the parachutes are in closed or open position. Let's add this position as variable position open. Now, let's try to simulate this in Google Colab. Now, we want to simulate the skydiving activity. With previous model, we simulate skydiving activity from 2,000 meter high helicopter with parachutes opening 
as 1000 meters. Assume the projected area is 0.4 meters squared when the parachute is not used and the area is 28 meters squared otherwise. We want to simulate this in 100 seconds. As usual, let's initialize the variables. Here are the simulation length, the position, velocity, weight, and friction. We define each friction in every situation. Let's run this code. And here are the program. Notice that we add the if and else condition that if the position is still above 1000, we calculate the friction by the close area. And if the position is under 1000, we calculate the frictions by the open area. Let's run this code and create the position and velocity plot. And here are the skydiver position plot. Note that after the position reach 1000, the change of position is drastically changed. And here are the skydiver velocity plot. Note that after approximately 21 seconds, the velocity is dropped drastically to approximately 8 m per second. It shows that after the parachute is open, the velocity of the skydiver is approximately constant. That's all for now. Let's discuss further in comment sections if you are interested and it would be awesome if you would support this channel by clicking likes and subscribe button. See you in the next videos.